First up, how to insert pictures. So we're going to review many of the buttons on the Insert Menu toolbar, particularly in the Illustration section. And it's off screen now. Well, here, let me drag it over. And then over here in the Text and Symbols. Um, I'm going to go ahead and double click. It's going to shrink my screen. That Illustrations area is now a drop down. And I click that, and there's my Pictures button. And so we're going to start with that. Now, before I get started with pictures, initially I was going to say skip this whole button, do what I've done for many, many years, and just go out to the browser, find a picture, copy it, crop it, paste it in. But when I was researching the features down here, I realized, nope, now that Microsoft has Bing built in, it's way better to use these features. So we'll discuss that here in a minute. So in illustrations, in pictures, you could select this device from this device and pick an image on your local machine in a folder of your choice. And sometimes I do that. But I'm not going to do that for this particular presentation. You could do stock images. I'll go there real quick. That's going to be limited to the images that are installed that came with your Office install. So there's not going to be all that many, but there's quite a few. Uh, and I, I believe these are all common, licensed, public domain, no copyright images. That's why there's no options up here. You'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. But anyway, you can search. So I could search for dog, and it'll show me all the dogs. Or I could click through and look at city, pictures related city, pictures related connection, or snow, or whatever, these different categories. So that's an option. But I figure why use that if under illustrations pictures, you can just go straight out to online pictures which is even better because it's powered by Bing. You don't need a browser. You don't have to log into Google or Bing. You're just right there, right from inside the Excel interface. And I will go ahead and look up puppy because there were no puppies on the built-in images. There's only dogs, five of them. But puppy, there's a whole bunch of them. And notice the Creative Commons only is a checkbox. I could uncheck it, and then I would get everything. Well, apparently it's not going to let me uncheck it. Anyway, I could uncheck it and get everything, but I would prefer leaving it checked. Right there, there you go. It's probably why they have it force checked. Anyway, it's fantastic. I have all these pictures of puppies from the Internet through Bing. So I can just copy one. What's next? I could do two or three. I generally don't like to. I just want to paste one. If I do two or three, it'll paste them over the top of each other. So there's where the picture came from. And they also have it down here. So I've got both highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and just stretch it to make it. <laughs> that didn't work. Undo. Let me unselect. Select just the picture here. Shrink that down. And then I'll grab this and I'll shrink it down and move it up. I have so little real estate. Let me shrink that. Okay. And so I can move it. And notice how the picture is in between. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and now it'll, it should, well, okay, because the picture is just beyond. So it's either going to line up on the left, or it's going to line up on the right. So there's left aligned. I'm holding down the Alt key the whole time and dragging. There's right aligned. And if I go down, it moves down. So that's what's happening. So I'm going to left align it, grab that, and even if I hold down Alt, it's maintaining scalability of the picture. So it's going to jump to the right cell boundary, but proportionately it can't fit all four. It can't align on this row height as well. So it's got it's got a top and a left fixed alignment. I held down the Alt key and told it align to this line, and then proportionately the bottom's going to fall where the bottom's going to fall. Anyway, another little trick you can do with pictures: grab it because you should keep the photo and, and all that information. You should keep it with the photo. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And in this case, I probably don't. I mean, I could. It's lined up at the bottom there. But I could also highlight. I had clicked it. It fired up a browser on either screen. Um, let me try that again. Let me. There we go. I right clicked it. And now let me click the line again. Watch what happens when I click the line. See the mouse pointer? It's in move mode. So I could drag it and try and align it, but I don't want to. Well, here, I'll hold down the Alt key to make sure. Yeah, so it's left aligned there. Now I'm going to use the up arrow key and just move it up a pixel at a time. There we go. And I could even move it to the right a little bit and line up the text. And now 
I'll click off of it. I'm going to click the picture, hold down the shift key, click this guy. I've got both selected. And I'm going to right click anywhere inside the selection and group by and group. Now I have all of it grouped in one object so that it's easy to move and I don't have to deal with the individual little pieces. But if I wanted to deal with individual pieces, I just select the object and then select into the object for that one thing. And then I can drag that one thing around, even though it's part of a group. And it'll still remain part of the group. Undo Control Z to move it back. Anyway, that's some tricks you can do with a picture and aligning different things and resizing. Next up, how to insert shapes. So I really like inserting shapes. Let me double click to fill the screen and shrink the toolbar. So insert illustrations shapes. I really, really like them and use them a lot. I tend to think of using Excel as VisioLite. So why don't we start by selecting the entire sheet, dragging all the column widths back to make our cells into more of a grid like a graph paper when you're in high school or college. And once we have that, let's just go ahead and highlight everything and right click and there's that right there. We'll change it to all white. That gets rid of the grid lines. So now we have a white sheet of paper that's grid line based so that when we start drawing these objects, we can use the Alt key to snap to the coordinates and make them all the same size really easily. Let's first do a level set. Insert shapes. Look at all the shapes you have. Ignore these. These are what I happen to be using recently. Focus on the lines. You have lines. You have lines with an arrowhead, arrowheads on both sides. You have uh, connectors that are basically lines that can go around things. You have a bunch of different variations on rectangles, a bunch of basic shapes, a bunch of block arrows, equations. I never use equations. Flow charts, use those heavily. And then stars and banners and callouts. So that's all your different shapes. Um, I have also sometimes gone into Visio and taken, I, I'll copy and take a screenshot of a computer or a server or a laptop or some of the icons in there and bring them over and paste them in here and use them just like shapes and shrink them down and use the connectors to tie them all together and do diagrams on a grid like this. But if you don't have Visio, there's a way to do it even here that we'll look at later. So let's do a little flow chart maybe. Let's start by insert illustration shapes. We'll start with, well, we can do the flow chart objects. It's fine. We'll start with a box. I've selected the object. Now I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm just going to start drawing it, dragging it. Now notice, if I don't hold down the Alt key, it's pixel by pixel, and everything I draw will be different shapes and look ugly. But because I've got the column widths and row heights uniform, I hold down the Alt key, and it's basically a grid. Snap, 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 snap. So let's see, if I want to make it four tall and six wide, that should be roughly it. Three and three, yep, and four. So there I have my first object drawn and all of the formatting options have come up. Now, if I select off, I get that menu. If I select the object, my toolbar changes to be consistent with whatever I select. So let's see. Let's, I could right click and format the shape. That's one way to go apply a bunch of formats or I could use these buttons. So we'll use the buttons. Shape fill, I want it to be white. The shape outline, hmm. I tend to like like a dark gray. I want it subtle. And shape effects. Nope. Don't want any of those. Back on shape outline. I should have not only done the color, but the weight. Maybe drop it, back it off a little bit. There we go. So I have that object. Now, what if I want to add text? Double click and add your text. <laughs> My font is white. Uh, let me select about here. While I'm inside, I'll just hit Control A and I'll change the font over to black. Since it started as a blue shape fill, it started out as a blue picture and so it had white text. Anyway, process one, line one, line two. Yeah, I don't want a line three. Now that we have it done, this object, let's copy it. So right click copy, I'll hold down the Alt key, put them about one apart, paste, one apart, paste, one apart, paste. Heck, I could even put one down here. 
one down there. So I paste all these objects and whatever, process two, process three, process four, five, six. And maybe I actually want to line them up differently. So I'll grab them, hold the Alt key down so they snap. Grab just these two, pull it down one, control to unselect that, grab that down one with Alt, and grab all of these, Alt key, but I'll leave them, eh, two apart's good, control key, then click it so I unselect it, Alt key, so I can drag it one at a time, control key, click, back to Alt key, holding it down, dragging it, and there we go. Now I've got them spaced nicely. Now let's draw some arrows. Go to the insert menu, illustrations, shapes, and I'll do the arrow here. Well, here in the lines. Notice as I move, I'm not clicking anything, but the mouse pointer, when it goes over an object, there's little uh, selectors, waypoints, if you will, that is, are used to snap to. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an arrow and snap from there to there. When I use the snap points to draw the arrow, now they're dark green. And if I move, the arrow moves with it. So that's why you want to use the snap points when you're aligning things. That way you can move objects around and uh, not have to redraw your diagram and, and reset, reconnect things together. So I've got that arrow, copy, paste. Drag this one, let go. Drag this one, let go. Control C, Control V. Drag this one. Let go, that's the tail end, there's the front end, let go. Uh, back to here, control C, control V, drag this one from there, <clears throat> point it down, control C, control V. I could also just drag the whole thing, but then they don't line up. And if they don't line up and I move it, the arrow doesn't move along with it. So anyway, I'll just grab it and snap, and then I'll grab this tip and snap, and there, now they're connected. Control Z to undo. Other objects that I commonly use, insert, illustration, shapes. I'll use a cloud. Where's the cloud? Yeah, they don't really have one. So I guess I'll use this if I want to represent the internet. And I just grab this little guy and hide him, bury him inside. And then I take and the fill, set it to white. And the shape outline, set it to some kind of gray. and Narrow down the weight. And you have your internet cloud bubble. That's one way to do it. Uh, I also like uh, insert illustration shapes, databases, and under flow charts, you have I, the, both. What is this? Direct access storage, like a hard disk, and magnetic disk. Anyway, I use this one for a database. Alt key to anchor it. Alt key to move it. And I guess I could make it the same size. There we go. And if the last one was four, well, there we go. And if I, yep, same size. And then, oh, this is a nice trick. I can click this object, Home, Format Painter, and voila. And I don't have to go through all the settings. They're the same now. Add text, double click. My database is whatever it is. You always can use these. Center it, center it vertically, center it both ways. All those apply, font colors, all the rest of these formats. Angling, apparently angling doesn't work. Anyway, there's some common features that I, that I like to use. Another one, let's see if I can do it. Insert. So if I'm doing a computer diagram, insert, uh, illustrations, icons, we're gonna look at that in a future section, but for the purposes of this diagram, then search up server and grab whatever you want. I'll just kind of grab one of each. I like that database. I like that cloud. And I'll hit insert, and now I have all those objects. Just got to drag them, use the Alt key to line them up. Get rid of this cloud. Grab this cloud. Resize it. And, oh, I should have formatted those long ago to gray. Oh, let's try that. Let's multi-select the control key down, right click on one of them, format object, and there we go. The line, I don't like that color, I want it to be lighter gray. There, now they're all the same. And copy, paste, 
this diagram doesn't make any sense. It's not supposed to. It's just me drawing stuff so you can see how it works. Because I use the Alt key to align these, then the diagrams are all straight as well, uh, so, except for this one. And this one, let's go do that. Let's demonstrate, insert, illustrations, shapes, all these lines. Let's do that line. And I can start it from here and go up. There we go. And click the gray line, go back to home, go to the format painter, get my mouse pointer right on the line, and click it. And there we go. And I've reformatted the line to be the gray color that everything else is. And so on. So you can make nice diagrams with Excel and use the Alt key, move things around, so they all line up. Anyway, very handy feature. And I could and maybe will later do a Bob Ross type video, the, the PBS painter. Yeah, that guy's awesome. He starts the white canvas and paints out the whole thing in a 30 minute episode. It'd be fun to go do diagrams and then you could watch all the little tricks to do it. But again, Visio is way faster. So if you're gonna do lots of diagrams, just pay the money and use Visio or a tool like it. Uh, but if you don't have the tool, you can use this and get pretty fast, pretty good with it. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show was how to uh, set up a delete or more appropriately, I should say, how to uh, bulk delete all these objects. I, I can select them, sure, one at a time and click each little one, but that's tedious. And if I accidentally click off, I'm going to lose them all. So there is a way, let's see, home, and then find. It's easier to find when I have my, uh, uh, fine, I have to make my toolbar bigger. So once my toolbar is bigger, and I'm on home, then I can go to find and select, and then I want select objects here. And now when I'm in that mode, oops, now I can just go select a whole bunch of objects all at once and delete them, and select a whole bunch of objects down here and delete them. And then the last object, I can't partially select, I gotta see the whole thing so I can highlight the whole thing. Wow, it doesn't want to go. Fine, I'll select it like that. Then. Oh, I see. It was much bigger than what I was selecting because of the white space. Anyway, that's how you multi-select objects. Was going to home and the find and select and the select object, which I'm now going to turn off and go back to the regular mode. Next up, how to insert icons. So inserting icons and so much more. So let's go to insert. Go to the illustration section and then icons, but there's really so much more. So let's start with images. Those are okay. These are basically the same images that were under the illustrations pictures. So they're limited to what's installed on your PC. So I tend to not use those. I would just go to insert pictures and go out to online and then you have the world at your fingertips. But you can insert images as well and look in here and grab some. Icons. There's some nice ones in here. Uh, in the previous section, we walked through doing flowcharts, and you can look up computers. Oops. Or you could look up, I don't know what else, weather. I'm sure there's weather icons. So there's all kinds of icons that you could look up. And we'll just select one, half moon. I will select two and see what happens with two. Hit insert, and voila, there's our two. Drag them up here, click off, click on to grab one, move it apart. Click on that guy. Actually, I should move them down. I know, I accidentally clicked. Boy, it does not like that. Okay, let's try that again. Grab both those, move them down. And what I wanted to show you, hey, I wonder if you can do two at a time. <laughs> that's funny. Yes, you can do two at a time when they're aligned. Well, that's excellent. And I'm sure Graph fill, graph outline. I wonder if it works for an icon. It does work, very nice. So you can change the colors. I don't know what fill does. Probably the, make it like dark night or something. Oh, hmm. I see within the lines are fill. So if I did fill that was oh, yellow, just to make it stick out, there you go. Now you can see what's going on. Uh, this is interesting. So. Insert illustrations, icons, 
we've looked at images, we've looked at icons, look at the cutout people. That's kind of interesting. Not so much for an Excel, but I could totally see how useful this would be for doing PowerPoint presentations. And I believe PowerPoint has the same uh, insert illustrations. But anyway, let's say I wanted to do a cutout of that particular person. Why? Because she has the banner board. So let's shrink this, get a little bit more real estate, get rid of this, get rid of this. Oh, undo. It's underneath, so I have to move that out of the way, grab that, grab this, move it up to the top. Uh, let's shrink it down a little bit. It's just so big I can't get it on the screen, get the picture on the screen. Yeah, that's good enough. So what I want to demonstrate, this is fun. So we've done our insert icon with a cutout picture. Let's go back to shapes and let's put in, I'll do a text box, but I could just as easily do a box and add text, but whatever. I'm going to do this one. And I'm going to line it up here and I'm going to type hello world. And I'm going to come back and highlight, make it bold, go to home, lock this in place, make it red, make it nice and big. Oops. Oh, sure. We'll do that too. Arial black and font size. Mm, we'll go even bigger. I should just hit one to go up and up and up. There we go. And sure, we'll do it that way and that way and center it. Okay. So I have that. But what's cool is... I can line it up. There we go. So I just pivoted it over. Well, I went too far. There we go. Now it's parallel with the board. And I might as well just click this and I'm not seeing it, so I'll do it this way. Right click, format shape. There should be a line and I'll put no line. And voila, if I zoom out, it basically looks like that board says whatever I want it to say. So that's kind of a neat thing that you can do. And not just necessarily here. You can do that on any image. Uh, you know, here's another thing I don't think I've shown. Uh, right click, send it back. Poof. <clears throat> that text box is now behind the picture. That's why it's not present. So there's layers. Let me pull it out and show you so you can see that. Control undo, right click. I'm going to send this one to the back. And the other one comes back to the surface. So think of all of these objects that we're inserting. At all of them. Pictures, shapes, icons. They're all just in... They're objects in layers, and uh, right-clicking, okay, depends on what you right-click to. If I right-click inside, now I'm editing text. There's no layer. If I right-click the object by clicking right there on the line, now I have the send to back, bring to front. So in Excel, it really matters. The context of whatever you selected drives here. Right-click over here. I'm going to get, for a cell, I'm going to get totally different context than if I right-click the picture versus if I right click inside the text versus if I right click the text box. There's a lot of similarities, but then there's some differences as well. And also the whole time I'm clicking this format box that I happen to have up, dialog is also changing. So I've cleaned the objects off, gone back to 100% zoom. I'm going to illustration, insert illustrations icons, and let's do the last two, stickers and illustrations. Stickers, never really use them. I think I've used these to represent a bug once on something I was working on. But I was looking for dogs earlier. There's some dogs that are the little stickers. So stickers kind of a little bit more colorful than an icon, but it's still just a drawing, and I, I don't use them too much. Illustrations, they're nice. Uh, where's education? I was looking at education earlier. I like that. I haven't looked at school. Let's look at it, then we'll look at education. Yeah, so there's little, nice little drawings, <laughs> school bus, that you can use. A bicycle, insert, and voila, I have a giant bicycle. Zoom it down so that it fits. Next up, how to insert smart art. Inserting smart art. So insert illustrations and smart art. Smart art is really neat. It it pre-builds a bunch of components, lays them all out nice and pretty for you, and it makes it easy because there's a pop-up where you enter the text that goes into the, the object. We'll, we'll see in a minute. As a matter of fact, let's just jump right in. We'll go to Cycle. Well, no, we won't. We'll look at all of the options that are available. There's lists, all kinds of lists. 
there's processes, lots of different processes. And remember, each of these are expandable. You can have a fourth block here. You can have a fourth wedge here. You can add a third block of whatever, the donut and the two circles. Uh, anyway, pretty neat. Cycles, we're going to do one of those. Hierarchies, relationships, matrices, pyramids, pictures. I'm not going to do office. That goes out online. So let's start with cycle. And let's pick the one with circles. And let's hit OK. And it lays it out for me with five different options. So let's go ahead. Let's do a real common one. Plan, do, check. I've seen it act. That's probably from the 90s. I think there's a replacement. Anyway, and oh, we have an extra one. Extra. Um, but I don't need to put the extra in. That's the beauty of the smart art. So the smart art filled all these in for me. I just have to edit over here. If I click off, the box is gone and just the art remains. If I click on, there's the entry box. Let's just get rid of extra. And voila, it dropped it down to four and adjusted everything accordingly. Very nice, and resize diagram and everything. There's also formatting up here. If I don't want the circles, I can change the layout or change it to boxes or change it back to circles. Uh, I can change the colors, multicolor, whatever. Now, these are all quick ways to do it. Go back to what the original was, more or less. I could also right-click any given object and format the shape, standard, fill. Oh, that's the line. I didn't realize I was on the line. I needed to be on fill. Change the fill, make it brown. Anyway, lots of flexibility there. Uh, let's switch. Let's delete this. And we're going to do a pyramid instead. Insert, illustrate, smart art. Go down to pyramids. And yeah, we'll just do that pyramid. And we'll hit OK. It's off screen, I can't see. Oh, I don't know. Gold, like the Olympics, silver, whoa, I didn't mean to do that. I hit tab and it indented it, which means that you can have detail notes. Anyway, so I can do all that. I could hit enter and I could do, uh, I don't know, iron. I could hit enter and I could do aluminum. And everything adjusts. If I want to go up here and put platinum in, platinum, everything adjusts. And I don't know what those do. There's only one style. There's not, it has three options, but there's really only one. Anyway, uh, oh, there's three dimensional stuff, whatever. The change colors is probably the only one you want. Sometimes instead of having it all blue, it might be nice to have different gradations or I don't know. And you could change any given object over here. What else do we have? Oh. I want to move silver up, I can move it up, move it down. <laughs> That'd be nice to have silver be silver color and gold be gold. And I could go do that, but I'm not going to. Um, I'd just go down here and right click, go to the fill, solid fill, and I would change it to silver there. Uh, anything else you want to discuss here? Matrix. Nope, I believe that's it. Smart art, very nice. It's actually even nicer, though, in uh, PowerPoint presentations. And I believe that's kind of an office standard thing, but it works too in Excel. If you're ever making diagrams or cut sheets of stuff, you can use the smart art. Next up, how to insert word art. Sometimes you need the letters and words to be pretty. And if you need that, then do the uh, insert text word art. And I'll just pick one. I mean, these are defaults. We can change them. That one looks good. So enter your text here. Okay. Highlight everything and hello world. So there we go. There's my pretty text. What else can I do with it? Well, I can select it and I can rotate it. Kind of neat. Doesn't have to be that way. It can be that way too. Um, I can right click. I'll right click the whole box and format the shape. No fill, well, oh, there is fill. If I do solid fill, that's the background, but I don't want that. Uh, the line, I actually, yep, there's no line, but I could put a solid line. 
what else do we have? What I really want is the text options. So there, solid fill, no fill. So now I'm dealing with the text. And I'll leave it, but I can change the color. I can make it red or yellow. Yeesh. Red, dark red looks better. Um, I can change the line. So that's, I've highlighted my word art. And right now I'm on the text and fill outline. And there's text effects. We'll look at that in a minute. So that was the text fill. And I can do it transparent too percent transparent and if I happen to have something underneath drag it over oops now, it's hard to see but there you can see the letters underneath or I could even make it 75% uh, transparent then it'd be really easy to see but that's the color inside that's transparent and actually it's only the word that I happen to be next to this one is not transparent. It's basically as if I highlighted that and then applied the transparency to it. Watch, if I go to zero, it goes back. So I did it in two parts. Anyway, let's just reset it all. Let's set it all to 0% transparent for the whole object. Come on, let's do it again. Select the whole object, then do zero, then hit tab. Boy, it didn't want to do that. Fine, I'll highlight the whole thing. And then I'll do zero, and then I'll hit enter. Really? Really? That is weird. It's stuck with 50%. I'll be darned. That's kind of buggy to me, but interesting. Now we're reset. Or I could have just done undo, undo, undo. So anyway, back to selecting the object. We messed around with the text fill. We can also mess around with the text outline. We could have no outline, so it's just the colors. Or we could have a solid line. In this case, it was a white line. What if we do blue? You'll see it's that's a lot. Go back to white, etc. Rounded, blah blah blah. Here, do they have a shadow? Transparency. I believe they do have a shadow. Watch. It's whatever color it is. If I go white, it just disappears. Control undo. Uh, reflection, there isn't any. I like glow. Let me just show you that. Mm, give it an orange glow. And there you go. There's the glow that goes around it. And you can control the glow. Two point, that's going to be tiny. Five point, 15 point. And then the transparency, 80% transparent. Wow, that's too much. 50% transparent. <laughs> that orange is gone. But anyway, you can see the letters underneath. And soft edges. Anyway, a lot of stuff you can do with word art. Next up, how to insert symbols. Inserting symbols. So inside of a cell, whenever you're entering text, you can optionally do insert, symbol, and symbol. And it's going to be the same thing as the Windows character map, where you have a font. I think this defaults to Marlet, which is a Windows font. So let's do that like as in a Windows font with buttons that go up here and whatnot. So there's a Marlet font, and then there's every other font you'd use, Arial, Calibre, all the rest of them. But you pick a given font, and then you pick a given character that you want, and then you insert it, and there it is. Uh, so that's the symbols tab, where you pick a font, pick a character, and there's quite a few characters. And so in that cell, I have Marlette font there. I could just as easily go do a webding and pick the spider and hit insert. So it's got two different fonts in the same cell. Let's see. So that's symbols. Uh, and I'll wrap that up by saying that there's webdings, some good ones in there, wingdings, one, two, and three, good stuff in there. And the Marlet font. And then just any given font, there's Arial. Any given font's gonna have all your regular characters plus a whole bunch more, because they're uh, UTF, so it's more than 255 characters, thousands of them. So that's symbols. 
There's also special characters up here. And special characters, you can see what they are. There, you could go find the special characters in here in symbols, but it's easier just if you want an M dash or an N dash web thing where it's, anyway, M space, N space, copyright. You don't have degrees. Degrees on the numeric keypad is Alt 248, and you get a degree symbol. So any of the at, oops, it went to Marlette font. <laughs> anyway, that is how you insert characters into a cell. Next up, how to insert equations. So what if I'm a mathematician or a scientist and I want to put a nice big equation inside of Excel just for presentation purposes, not to actually do a calculation? <clears throat> well, there's a way to do that. Uh, Excel comes with about a dozen stock equations. So insert, symbol, equations. Oh, it's hard to see on the screen. Well, anyway, area of a circle, binomial theorem, expansion of sum, Fourier series, etc. Pythagorean theorem. I'll click one, quadratic equation, and there it is. It, it unfortunately doesn't resize, so it is the size that it is. Well, let's try the font. Well, there you go. That's how you make it bigger, is use the font. Can I go in and edit it? Hmm. Why, yes, I can, kind of, but it's going to be awkward. <laughs> it's not going to line up. Well, let's see. I don't know what I would want to put in there. I can do some stuff. So anyway, you can do some editing of it. So what do you do if you don't want one of the stock dozen or so equations built there? Well, there's two ways you can deal with it. Under the Insert menu, under Symbols, there's an ink equation. We'll talk about that later. But notice how when I move the mouse pointer, it, this is not one button, it's two. There's equation with a drop down where you pick from the 12. We don't want that. We actually want to click this button. Click the insert equation button and then click. Look at the toolbar. Look at all these options you get. So now I can go and uh, this is what we were doing before, the standard set of 12. I don't have to use those. Uh, we'll talk about the ink equation later. But I can go in here and start laying it all out. Radical, lay this out. Same thing as I already had laid out. Let's get rid of it. Delete. Oops. Back to insert. Back to symbols. Click the top button. Now, type my equation in here. Mm. Oh, yeah. Let's do double integral. And then I can just start typing whatever I want to type in there. And I can type my values in here. Pretty neat. I can select the whole object and make the font bigger. So if you want to do anything with... Uh, formulas. So click off, my menu bar goes back to home, click on, and notice the context sensitive menu items. Click off, help is the last menu item. Click on a given object and special menus specific to that object come up. So I could shape the formula for the format and I'm not gonna, but that's all things I could do to shape this. And then equation brackets and functions and just all kinds of stuff. And finally, how to insert ink equations. And last, we're going to talk about inserting an ink recording. I, I don't use this, but I'll just cover it just, just to be thorough. So insert symbols. Uh, we can do equations or a drop down, whatever. We'll do the drop down. And we'll scroll to the bottom, and there's this ink equation button. We'll click it. And that brings up a dialog, and it will make it bigger. And in this dialog, you can write stuff out. So, for example, I'll do 1 plus 1, and it's going along just fine, all over 32 maybe, and equals, sure, x over y. And it pretty much got what I wanted it to say. Uh, let's say I put a value out here, but I didn't mean to. So I can go turn on the erase, and in the upper left corner, that little asterisk looking thing, if I line that up on the, there we go, I delete it. Uh, what else? I could select and correct. <laughs> look at that. So it knows it's X over Y, but I could change things. Oh, look at that. I could make a bigger X, smaller X, etc. It gives me a bunch of options to pick from, or 
believe I could select a whole bunch and, nope, nope, how about if I can hit, let's try that again. Let's select a whole bunch of it and press delete. Nope, not going to let me. Fine, I can hit clear and that'll just wipe everything out. Uh, I was poking around trying to do some chemistry type equations and it does a pretty good job of it. But <laughs> it's math centric. So then it'll start to get confused. And when I was doing L's and 1's, it starts to get confused and wants to take things to math. So I, I don't know how well that'll work, but you can try it at your own. See how well it works for you. And I believe that wraps it up for inserting objects. Thanks for watching.